We are Lord of Life. We are the body of Christ. Gathered together. And spread out into the world. We come together to praise God's name. To grow deeper in our faith. And to move from asking what I can receive from God to asking how I can share God's love. We are called to serve God through helping our neighbors, welcoming all people, and learning to live out our faith. Not only on weekends, but, but every, every day, day of, of the week. week. We are Lord of Life. We are the church. We are loved by God. And we are sent to serve. We, we are, are Lord, Lord of Life. life. We are Lord of life. Welcome. It's great to have you with us wherever you might be around the world for worship here at Lord of Life. I'm Pastor Peter, and I'm so happy uh, to be with you today. A uh, couple of announcements. Next week, we are going to begin uh, the celebration of Holy Communion in a virtual manner uh, in our worship. Uh, so you uh, might want to be prepared for uh, worship as you uh, uh, come to it next week. Bring some uh, wine and, and bread, um, and we will celebrate uh, the sacrament together. Uh, we will continue to do this the first weekend uh, of each month into the future. Uh, a couple, another announcement, uh, just want to continue to remind you of all the great things, uh, activities that keep happening here at Lord of Life. You can go to our website and find out about uh, opportunities for Bible study and prayer and support groups. We've got Hope at Home. Our children's uh, ministries are just going strong. Check it all out at lordoflife.org. Those are all the announcements, and now I'm going to send it over to Brian. Uh, lead us on the journey. Hello, everyone. As we start off our worship today, the worship band has put together a video of a brand new song, and I hope you enjoy it, and I invite you to sing along as soon as you feel comfortable with it. And also, since this is a brand new song, this is also a song that we've never played together in person, and so I think it's just a testament to the talents of this worship band uh, that they put together this fabulous uh, arrangement um, of a song called God River of Life. Let's worship.
Thanks, Brian. That was awesome. Thank you, thank you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Gracious God, the days have grown shorter, the weather has grown colder, the pandemic has grown larger, the political climate has grown darker, and the fatigue has grown deeper. We ask that you might bring your words of light and hope and strength and love to our hearts as we worship together today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today's reading is from Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it. For he has founded it on the seas and established it on the rivers. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in his holy place? Those who have clean hands and pure hearts, who do not lift up their souls to what is false and do not swear deceitfully. They will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from the God of their salvation. Such is the company of those who seek him, who seek the face of the God of Jacob, Salah. Lift your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Thank you, Mary and Bethany. The Holy Gospel tonight comes from the Gospel of Matthew, the 21st chapter. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, by what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I'll also ask you a question. If you tell me the answer, then I'll also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we're afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, well, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not, but later he changed his mind and went. Then the father went to the second and said the same, and he answered, I go, sir, but he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus then said to him, them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him, but the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, hello, everyone. This weekend, Lutherans around the world are celebrating over 500 years of the Protestant Reformation. It started with Martin Luther, a Catholic monk who saw issue with the Catholic Church of his day, and diligently called out how they were harming the people of that time, which led towards a break in the one church and formed many subsequent churches from that. It's from him and some of his ideals where we gain some of the richness of worshiping in a Lutheran church today. For instance, we've inherited a tradition that believes that God is the one who saves us, that it's not anything we do or don't do, any of our deeds, good or bad. We believe that we all have access to God 
can call upon God and that we're given these gifts that God gives us to use and God sees them as holy. So for instance, we can feel called to be teachers or healthcare workers or accountants or sales associates and God uplifts those passions just as much as a priest or a pastor would get uplifted. I mean, Martin Luther once remarked that what makes a good Christian shoemaker is not putting little crosses on the shoes to know that they are Christian, but in good craftsmanship, because God is interested in good craftsmanship. Now, these are just some of the many gifts that we gain from this theology, and great things to uplift. One of the ways that we celebrate the Reformation here at Lord of Life is through rejoicing with our confirmands as they affirm their baptismal promises. Each year on this weekend, our 10th grade young adults reflect on what faith means for them and who God is in their lives and affirm the promises that were made for them in baptism as promises of their own in this next chapter of their life. This year we celebrate with 157 of them. And while I really want to say congratulations, I know how much work and how much effort you've put into to get to this point, a more appropriate response instead, especially in light of the Reformation is, I am so glad that we are the body of Christ together. Now let's go make a difference. I mean, because all of this work you've put into it to get to this moment is not an end. It's a beginning, it's a next chapter in your life of faith. I mean, in the letter to the Corinthians, the Apostle Paul reminds us that life in Christ is about being continually made new. Faith leads us into holy actions, not to save ourselves, but as this outpouring of a God who deeply loves us. And when we're filled with that love, it has nowhere else to go except towards the neighbor. And even as we reflect on the Reformation over 500 years ago, we also need to remember that our robust theology and ability to incite change are not the only gifts that we've been given. Unfortunately, we've also been given a namesake who did not always reflect God's light and love to his neighbors. Martin Luther was far from perfect. In fact, he had some really awful moments. Some of his works reflect anti-Semitic language and ideals that unfortunately have led to hundreds of years of persecution for our Jewish siblings. And some of his writings even continue to be used by anti-Semitic nationalists today. Now with any gift, we can choose what we do with it and clinging to the mission of Jesus Christ, we have the responsibility to sift through what we say yes to and what we say no to. We have to reckon with and rumble through the parts of our history that aren't so great so that we don't make the same mistakes. So I'm still really glad that we're the body of Christ together. Now let's go make a difference. This isn't just for our confirmands this weekend. That's also to you. You who are tuning in from wherever you are. You who seek hope and a faithful reflection. You who desperately want things to feel good or perfect, but deep down know that they aren't and don't quite know what to do. If we turn back to our gospel reading for today, Jesus enters into the temple in Jerusalem, being a rural rabbi from Nazareth, and begins teaching. Now, we know who Jesus was and who he would become, but in that moment, to those religious leaders, it would have been similar if I were to travel to the Vatican and start preaching in the Sistine Chapel. They would probably have a similar response. By what authority do you do these things? And who gave you that authority? But Jesus, instead of offering an answer or an explanation, quips back with a question for them. He asks if they know who John the Baptist was and if his baptism came from heaven or earth. 
By that time, John was well known and was considered a prophet sent by God to many of the people. He preached a message of not following the status quo, especially that of Rome, of repenting for the ways in which people served the empire instead of God, and he shone a light for who was to come to really break the chains of their oppression. The religious leaders understood that whatever answer they gave was going to lead them in a direction they didn't want to go. If they said John's baptism came from heaven, well, then Jesus would question their religious loyalties and authority as leaders. And if they said that it came from earth, well, the people would question their religious authority because they all believed that John was sent by God. Caught between a rock and a hard place, they chose no answer. And then Jesus responds with a parable about two sons whose father asks them to go out and do work in the vineyard. The first responds that he won't go, but then changes his mind and goes. Well, that second son says he will go, but then doesn't follow through on that promise. Traditionally, this parable has been interpreted as the two sons being the Gentiles and the Judeans of the day. One saying the wrong thing and then changing, while the other has it right, but doesn't really follow through. In Jesus' explanation of the parable, he calls those Judean religious leaders to change their hearts and minds. And he calls them to believe in the way of righteousness as John preached, as he himself was preaching. Now I have to admit that that interpretation of the parable feels a little too neat and tidy. I mean, to my 21st century ears of being removed from the situation, I almost feel like it dehumanizes people into two groups of people rather than allowing them to be individuals. And it also removes some of the responsibility of what Jesus was trying to say when we say it's supposed to be people in the past. I mean, if we're to go back to those brothers for a moment, it's interesting to visualize ourselves in the story. Have you ever promised something and then not followed through? The kids these days call that ghosting. Or have you ever refused to commit, hoping for something better to come along or not wanting to add another stressor in your day, only to show up in the end? Maybe what Jesus was trying to tell them, and us, is that how we live out our faith doesn't have to be perfect. I hope you hear that, confirmands. Neither brother had it figured out. They both messed up in some way. And also, neither brother got in trouble. I mean, this was an opportunity for them to change their ways, to look towards newness. Theologian and civil rights leader Howard Thurman tells a really beautiful story of his grandmother. She owned a piece of land, and her neighbor did not particularly like that a woman of color owned land next to hers. In her anger and frustration, the woman would spend every night taking manure from the chicken coop and then dumping it onto his grandmother's garden, on top of everything. His grandmother, instead of being moved with anger or malice, spent every morning tilling that manure into compost. Now when that neighbor got very sick and Thurman's grandma noticed that she did not have any visitors, she went over one afternoon with a bouquet of flowers. The woman was shocked. No one had visited her and she was so moved by the kindness. Noticing the flowers, she commented on how they were the most beautiful flowers that she had ever seen. Where did you get them? And his grandmother simply said, you helped me make them. Because when you were dumping in my yard, I decided to plant some roses. I wonder about what the roses of today could look like when we choose to see being made new as a gift a gift of faith, 
and choose to live out those baptismal promises that we've been given? What does it look like when we take the manure moments of our life and turn them into compost? In our day and age today, even before the pandemic, there were days where it felt like manure heaped upon manure. I mean, with the ability to have the news in our hands at a moment's notice, also comes the pain with having the news in our hands at a moment's notice. Some days the rush to keep up with the world has led to an inability to really process what we're experiencing. And so maybe this is as good of time as any to reclaim the spiritual practice of lament as we see it through the scriptures. Now lament, as the dictionary defines it, are the passionate outcries of grief and sorrow. Or in other words, sharing with God the moments that break our heart. In the Psalms, or the songs of, the wor of worship in our Bible, nearly one third of them are laments. So if you've ever thought that people have never yelled at God, cried out to God, or raised negative feelings towards God, well, think again and look towards those Psalms. Here the Israelites laid their burdens at God's proverbial feet because they believed God could carry it. And God can carry yours too. Now lamenting has four steps. Remembering, reflecting, confessing, and repenting. Um, to think back on the past, those moments big and small, recognizing them for what they are, naming wrongs that are done or have been done, and then finding a way to turn or change as what repent means. Lamenting is not a one-time occurrence, but a way of being at times, a way to give God your whole self, to make an effort towards faithful change. As Lutherans over 500 years from the Reformation, we have to confess that while we've been given some great gifts in our theology, that it wasn't and isn't perfect. Much like if we look at the history of our country, or any country, there are gifts, but there are also things we need to name and repent of so that we can continue building a better community even in our own lives, we have the ability to be made new. I am so glad that we are the body of Christ together. Now let's go make a difference. Amen. Amen, thank you, Pastor Caitlin. And as we reflect on her words about loving God imperfectly, um, let's sing uh, this hymn, which is very much about loving God imperfectly. So let's sing together. Thou not beat us 
Drawn together in the compassion of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in any need. In your love, you ask thought-provoking questions and help us to reflect on how we are living out our faith. Grant us courage to boldly believe and influence our actions today and every day. May we see those in need not as people requiring help, but as people worthy of love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your love, you create our earth filled with living things of every kind. Sustain the intricate connections among plants, insects, animals, and organisms we don't even know or recognize. Bless the work of scientists who help us extend our love into the natural world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your love, we celebrate this day the work that Martin Luther did to reform your church 500 years ago. And as Luther questioned authority and reformed structures of domination, help us to do likewise, working to reform systems of oppression and turn them into places of well-being and common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your love, you tenderly care for your children and nurse them to health. Bring relief to all those who need healing, hope, or restoration this day. Praying especially for Mary Alberts recovering from surgery, and Nancy Hackler, who is hospitalized. Bound together in grief and hope, we lift up all who mourn this day, especially Patty Leaf and Lori Thompson at the death of their mother, and Jenny Schroeder and John Nelson at the death of their father. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your love, you name and claim us each as your beloved children. This weekend, we celebrate with the 157 young adults affirming their baptism and affirming their desire to follow you and to reside in this community of faith. We also rejoice with the newly baptized this weekend, Hallie and Oliver. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
This weekend, 157 young people from Lord of Life are affirming their baptism. These, these confirmands are virtually coming together this weekend uh, on this Reformation weekend where this, uh, this great faith that we have is a faith that they're saying yes to. And so please include them in your prayers in these coming days as this is the next step in their journey of faith as they are a part of this church that has reformed and is always reforming. So we give thanks to God for these young people, for their parents and godparents, for their family, for this congregation that loves and supports them, that nurtures and challenges them, and that welcomes them as part of this community. So we give thanks to God for these 157 confirmands this weekend. This fall, Lord of Life is working on a campaign to help alleviate the medical debt for essential workers who are impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. Our goal is to raise $50,000 this fall, which will help alleviate over $5 million worth of debt. Through RIP medical debt, $1 can equal $100 of help. Thanks to your generosity, we have already raised over $35,000 towards this goal and giving continues through November 21st. Thank you so much to those who have already given. We are gonna continue with the giving of our regular worship offering and we thank you so much for your generosity. You may now give in any of the ways listed on the screen. All right, friends, let's sing one more song together. Your love's making all things new. You're working in all for good. For the things of this world, there is hope renewed in the life that is found in you. You make all things new. Today and forever, your love never changing, this hope never faded. Hallelujah! Our faith isn't things unseen, bringing life where it has not been. Speaking things that are not as if they were and I am alive in you oh, you make all things new you make all things new yesterday and forever your love never changed hope never faded hallelujah the heavens have been opened I know that I am chosen and I am alive in you I am alive in you God you are restoring all things for your and I am alive in you. I am alive in you. The heavens have been opened. I know that I am chosen. And I am alive in you. I am alive in you. God, you are restoring all things for you.
In John 14, Jesus said to the disciples, his friends, my peace I give to you, my peace I live with you. For the last 2,000 years, Christians in worship have shared that peace with one another. And that's why I say to all of my friends out there, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And I invite you to share a word of peace with those who might be with you or, or send, a, send your thoughts of peace to friends wherever they might be. And now receive the benediction. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless each of you and all of us, now and forever. Amen. I want to thank everybody out there for worshiping with us today. It's been a great joy for, for us to be with you, and we hope that it has been uh, meaningful for you uh, as well. And we send you off with these words. We are children of God, loved beyond measure, sent, sent to, to serve, serve the world. The world. is our God. This mortal